And now it's time for another edition of What Would Jell-O Do? What happens when the government riots, part two? Let me express my condolences and sorrow to the family of George Floyd for what has happened. And I'm sorry you have lost him. Sorry that his daughter will now grow up knowing her father was murdered by the police and that scar will always be there. On down the line, the death penalty for being suspected of passing a $20 bill that we don't even know whether it was fake or not. The real death penalty, like so many more innocent people, breathing while black. My condolences to the family of Breonna Taylor in Louisville, Kentucky. 26-year-old EMT who worked two hospitals shot while in bed in a no-knock drug raid that got the wrong apartment. And her boyfriend is still charged with shooting at a cop when he didn't know who they were. They busted down the door and he fired because they thought it might be some attempt to murder them and turn out the way it was. My condolences to the family of Ahmaud Arbery, of Michael Brown, of Eric Garner, of Oscar Grant, killed on camera at a BART station by a poorly trained BART police officer, Bay Area Rapid Transit, the train system. And my condolences to the family of Philando Castile, Amadou Diallo, Walter Scott in South Carolina, Freddie Gray in Baltimore, Tommy Rice gunned down by two cops before he even pulled what appeared what actually was a toy gun out of his pocket and he was tw in a Cleveland park and he was 12 years old. Rogue cops? No, this is too much of a pattern. This is rogue government. Derek Chauvin, I hope I got the name right, the cop who had his knee on George Floyd for what, almost nine minutes, charged with Third degree murder now. I never knew there was a third degree murder, but I think part of the reason they charged him was just to get people to calm down in the streets. You don't want to charge people too soon until you really think you can convict them. Can you imagine what's going to happen if it's like the people who beat up Rodney King and they don't convict him? Same with the other cops. I know why Keith Ellison and the DA are taking their time they want to get their case right and not lose. It's important. And what they're up against is the cops are doing what they're trained to do, rogue government. And this is how they're trained to do it. In some cases, they've been itching to do stuff like this their whole lives and join the cops just so they can get away with it. 18 complaints have been shoved in since he joined the force and what was it, like eight or nine against him and his partner just since, uh, no, 13, since 2012. And one of the cases he was in was six cops gunned down and killed Wayne Reyes. And then he was involved in two more officer-involved shootings. And the Minneapolis PD, now it's come out that in the past few years, they have kneed people and choked them 44 times. This is standard police abuse procedure. No wonder, from 2013 to 2019, there have been 3,000 complaints of police misconduct filed against the Minneapolis Police Department, and we're not even talking St. Paul on the other side of the river involving 900 cops. Maybe part of the reason that is such a deep part of we can get away with anything we want, police culture, is because for years and years and years until early 2007, Hennepin County, where Minneapolis is, has a district attorney named Amy Klobuchar, who has a very ugly track record of never going after the cops, no matter what they did, no matter how many people they killed or choked, but she sure liked throwing the book at African Americans to the point that her presidential campaign was being picketed in the state of Minnesota. Meanwhile, back in another ground zero because of Breonna Taylor, Louisville, Louisville, excuse me, Louisville, Kentucky, they were already on edge because earlier a police officer named Greg Satterley was finally fired after he had been going crazy tasering people, finally caught on camera, 
tasering a handcuffed African-American woman sitting on the ground. Even the police chief, who just now got fired, um, said our community needs to be protected from you when he fired the guy. But that's all that happened. They got fired. These cops who shoot people and they die. About all they ever get since they're, oh, you naughty cop, you naughty cop. You know what we're doing? We're going to fire you and then somebody else can hire as you a cop. Or worse yet, you're going to be suspended for three months with pay. Or you're going to be reassigned to a desk job until the heat died down. You naughty cop. You're just going to have to wait till this blows over. That is standard rogue government policing all over the country. San Francisco budgets two million or more every year to pay off lawsuits against the police for violence and misconduct. Wouldn't that money be better spent, or the 10 million New York City spends every year, wouldn't that money be better spent training the police better and searching out and hiring better, more humane police officers? My heart goes out to the family of Trayvon Martin. My heart goes out to the family of Sandra Bland, whose crime was driving while African-American in an African-American town of Prairie View, Texas, and a cop sped up on her, so she pulled out of the way, thinking he was chasing somebody else, and she got taken to jail because she didn't signal her turn to the side of the road. Then she was found hung in her jail cell. Sure, her family got almost $2 million in a wrongful death suit, and they settled, which is kind of an admission of guilt. No cops or that jail prosecuted for murder. Thy condolences go out to the families of Gerald Hall, another one killed in Berkeley by a BART police officer because he was running away from him. Or the family of the kid who was found hanging in the Concord station after calling his mother earlier saying he'd fallen asleep on the train, he got off at the last stop, he didn't know where he was, and he was scared. And later they had pulled over somebody else and they found two hoods in the back of their car and never charged these people or linked them to what seems like it might have been a lynching. My condolences to the families of the rash of African-American prisoners in Richmond, California in the early 80s, one after another, found hung in their jail cells. Oh, I guess people are just killing themselves. It got linked to a group of so-called rogue cops inside the department who were also allegedly Klan members called the Richmond Cowboys. I have no idea if any of them ever got charged with a crime. And then Police Truck, the Dead Kennedy song, was written about a real incident involving Oakland police cops that hit the paper for about a day right after I got to town. More recently, another group of rogue Oakland cops, rogue enough they actually got caught, called the Riders, had to stand, would cover all kinds of violence, corruption, misconduct. And then right around the time, the Ramparts case happened in L.A., murders, one innocent person shot and paralyzed, and much, much more. The only regret I'm sure any of them had was that they are the ones who happened to got caught. My heart goes out to the family of Ruben Salazar. Speaking of a police riot, when the LAPD were going crazy on Chicanos, brown people, Latinos in East LA yet again, late 60s, early 70s, Ruben Salazar was exposing them in their violence in the LA Times. His reward during one of the police riots when they were tear gassing people, he ducked into a bar, sat down, had a drink, and a cop walked in and fired a tear gas canister into the side of his head and killed him. LA Times reporter. Surely it's nice of him to be on a postage stamp 20 years later, but I'm sure he would rather be alive. Rogue government. Rogue police. My heart goes out the family of Carl Hampton in Houston, Texas, 1970, picked off by an HPD, Houston PD sniper from the roof of a church. And Jose Campos Torres pulled out of a bar for disorderly conduct by the Houston cops, and they beat him up so badly they were afraid to take him to a hospital. So, still cuffed, they threw him into a canal and watched him drown instead. And one the cops got one year probation and fined one dollar by an all white jury. My heart goes out to Fred Pice, a prominent gay activist and 
the down in the, the same t time period in Houston. Pride Week was just starting. Police weren't too happy, and he was shot. He claimed that when he had a parking lot bound where Pride was going on, that he reached for a cop's gun of a plainclothes cop. Suddenly, I don't know how he could reach for a cop's gun and got shot up through the back of the head. Nobody paid for that one. The reason I bring those up is because they had been, they gained a national reputation for being homicidal to the point where it took a lot of nerve for a punk band, Really Red, to title their album and the song about this called Teaching You the Fear, detailing each one of these. And luckily, they didn't get nailed on it by those Houston cops, although Ronnie Bond, the singer, was on his bus to move to Seattle a little bit, a year or two later, and apparently the cops came looking for him at his house a week or two after that teaching you the fear. This took some guts. And then, <laughs> more guts, maybe another band from the same time, AK-47, uh, Ronnie had dedicated a live version on their live record, the Houston PD, the badge means you care, their slogan. Here's AK-47, the badge means you suck. And somehow they survived that, especially because the singer was a reporter who covered a police station and they never figured out it was him and stuff. I'd still like to know who bombed Judy Berry and Daryl Cherney, whose first activist, Judy's car blows up in Oakland and the FBI were on the scene within minutes to charge them with bombing themselves. Even though these were nonviolent activists, somehow they knew that this was gonna go on early. The lawsuit eventually netted a $4 million out of court settlement to Judy's estate and Daryl, but they know who did this. They may have helped. L.A. riots, 1992. They call them the Rodney King riots. It might be better to call them the Reagan Bush Bradley riots. Or I think Wilson was the governor, too, wasn't he? Bradley was an ex-cop, was the L.A. mayor, Tom Bradley. 63 people died in those riots. That's twice as many as I thought. And even when I thought it was about 30, who were they? How did they all die? What happened to them? Be very interesting to find out. Detroit riots, 1967, the worst in American history until South Central. 43 dead. Who were they? What happened to them? My heart goes out to the five activists killed in Greensboro, North Carolina in 1979, holding a death to the Klan rally. And the uh, Klan themselves and some neo-Nazis had thought they, they, they had a better idea and showed up in trucks and cars with rifles and fired all kinds of rounds, killed five, wounded 10, as many as 40 of them may have taken part, and six were tried for murder and acquitted on the grounds of self-defense, nine tried in the federal court for violating civil rights, not guilty because their motion, motivation was political, not racial. What? No wonder we have these things. Let's go on and on and on. And that doesn't even count the war on drugs. All these raids where they just kill somebody when they walk in. And the, also thanks to uh, the Reagan administration or Bush when they changed all the property laws so you could seize property and sell it of a suspected drug dealer before they even went to trial or could prove their innocence. It has been proven in Southern California that cops and sheriff's departments were taking a look at different pieces of real estate to see what they wanted to try and steal, basically. And I think it was outside of Malibu, if I recall, a blind rancher in his 70s was gunned down in his house. He had no weed growing on the property, nothing, but it came out that that police or sheriff's department had just picked out his land as the land they wanted to steal and sell. This is how out of hand this stuff gets. Recently, another African-American man answered his door in Kansas City, Kansas, and blown away immediately by a SWAT team. Called out because somebody called the cops saying, oh, there's a big crack house drug dealer thing going on there. Uh, you better go get them. And instead of checking it out, they called out the whole damn SWAT team. And, um, you know, it, and he was totally innocent. This is called swatting the ugliest of all pranks, when you report somebody else to a SWAT team knowing they're innocent, hoping they get the worst or at least the scare of their lives. My heart goes out to the families and peeps of all the people who died at Kent State, something that's just torn me up ever since I was a kid. 
and the two students who died shortly thereafter in Jackson State University in Mississippi. And before either of them, two more, again, racially motivated, in this case, in Orangeburg State in South Carolina. My heart goes out to all the parents who've had to do what Bill de Blasio and LeBron James have both detailed, having to sit their kids down, de Blasio's son is biracial, and tell them how to act if the cops start fucking with them because they don't want their children to get killed and they're scared. LeBron even said, quote, we are being hunted. And he's basically right. So does any wonder when the Black Panthers first started, they were arming themselves and they said we were arming themselves against the police to defend ourselves because they're shooting so many innocent people in Oakland. Is it any wonder, and Ice got heated with me on this when he finally took the song off the album, that people were defending the song on Cop Killer on the Body Count album on the grounds of freedom of speech and not on the grounds that so many innocent people are getting shot by the cops that it's time to fight back and stuff. I hate to see it coming to that, but what are the Panthers supposed to do when they know they're getting targeted by Hoover and COINTELPRO to the point where their leader in Chicago, Fred Hampton, and Mark Clark were shot to death through the wind, the walls of their apartments and killed in their beds. I'll never forget when that came on the news that night, when I, or the night, night after when I was a kid, and the Panthers just silently walked the TV reporters through the apartment, and the blood was everywhere. So... Now, what's it come to? And again, my feelings go out to my man, my friend Ice-T for even having to write the song on this new Body Count album called Bloodlust. And <laughs> here goes Moon Unit. All right, there you go. Of all the things he feels he has to say at this point is that it's unfortunate that we even have to say black lives matter. I mean, if you go through history, nobody ever gave a fuck. And it's, you know, it's about black lives at the moment, but the truth of the matter is they don't really give a fuck about anybody. If you break the shit all the way down to the low, fucking dirty ass truth, no lives matter. And that's why people are in the streets.